Hello ladies and welcome back to another Lunch and Learn. We are getting to know the pastors at Timberline Church, which we have 17 in our three campuses. Um, I'm Leanne Daly with the Women's Ministry and I want to welcome you whether you are here with us in person or on Facebook. And today we are here with Pastor Darren Fred. He is the teaching pastor here at um, Timberline in Old Town slash Everyday Joe's. Um, so our goal here is just to get to know him on a personal level, what he does for Timberline and um, professionally and all of that. So feel free to ask questions. I'll get us started with a few. And um, welcome, first Thank of all. Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> Leanne, and welcome to Everyday Joe's Coffee House. Thank you. And Thank you. Yes, tell us about this place. Let's start. You online. Okay, so tell us where we are and what we you are. Do. We are in Old Town Fort Collins. <clears throat> And we are on Mason Street, right next to the railroad track between Oak and Mountain. Okay. <coughs> and we are in an old Firestone building. It was originally a Firestone tire shop. Mm -hmm. It was built in about 1925. <coughs> and then it was a, an electric shop, like appliance and repair shop. And it was... The F's for the Firestone are still on the facade of the building. Really? And then the, the people that oh. owned the electric shop were the owners of this vacant space in 2002 when, when a previous pastor uh, found its availability and, and we moved <clears throat> in here as a church in 2002. So how long have you been with Timberline as a pastor? Me? Mm -hmm. um, as a pastor, I started part-time in 1998. Okay, so you... Full, and I went full time a year later. Okay, so you were with them when Do they the made this move. Yeah, yeah. I was on staff when this church started. Is that what you meant? Yes, twenty-two so, years. Yes. So tell us how. You what was the vision? Twenty-three. With this everyday Joe's, you know, the coffee the shop. The coffee house. Church. Yeah. Tell us how this. Well, the vision of the coffee house was that it. We have this, um, really great space, uh, spacious room in an emerging old town culture and how can we uh, sort of how can we be a benefit to the community okay. and how could we just embed ourselves be part of the community uh, the coffee house idea was was around in some of the people in, in yeah. of the church <clears throat> but how can we be a benefit and basically it became the metaphor would be this is what everyday joe's coffee house is what the building
tree, which we did, my wife and I, for one year. But uh, and then I, so I felt called or called. It doesn't have to be in quotes to the ministry at 21 in this church. This church. Uh, sent us off to Argentina for one year to be missionaries. We came back. I went to Bible college. In 1996, I came back to Fort Collins to do my internship at First Assembly of God. And then uh, in 1998, I became part-time at Timberline. And then full-time in 99. So that's... Wow, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah Chris. May I ask where you went to Bible college? And... Oh, I went in Springfield, Missouri at Central Bible College. Okay. Is that is not where Pastor Gary went? To? He did. Yeah. Steve Harris went yeah. there. Uh, I think that that's it. That school no longer exists. Oh, uh, did it, it morph merged, into another it one? It merged with Evangel University. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, which is also <laughs> something that got. Yeah. And so now I'm technically, I'm an alumnus of Evangel University. Okay. Yeah. No. Did you know they do that? Like, if the school merges, then you merge with them. No. <laughs> your, history, your history merges with them. I'm a different person. I thought you maybe <laughs> went to where Robert Slayerton went to. But I figured if somebody's like that. Robert Slayerton? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the era that you were brought up in is the same era I was. So I figured yeah. you did. And then how did you get to Fort Collins at, at, at 21 to go to Timber, like First Assembly of God? Well, my family May. moved to Windsor, Colorado oh, okay. when I was 12 years old. And we started coming to church in Fort Collins. Oh, okay. Uh, from that time, we didn't actually go to First Assembly. Our family moved over to First Assembly, kind of in in uh, incrementally <laughs> in the late eighties. Okay, so tell us how you met Mel and how yeah, it all worked. That 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 we all love uh, romance how did stories. I meet and Mel? <laughs> yeah. It was her birthday yesterday. Uh, happy birthday, 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 Mel! We hope you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a, a young adults group. It was actually, the time the church was small enough that they kind of merged the high schoolers and the young college, college age kids. Mm. It was called Crossfire. And uh, she was on the worship team. And so that's when I first met her. When I became very interested in seeking to be a missionary. Uh, it was her to whom I went because she had already been in Paraguay. She was getting ready to go to Mexico to do missions work. I began to spend more and more time with her because of I was interested in missions and she was already involved in missions. And no no ulterior motives at all. She had ulterior motives. Okay. <laughs> Would she, she agree with us? If you ask her, she will not admit. <laughs> no, she, so we just, and then literally, it was like, when she was getting ready to leave for Mexico, I, there is this term, there's a, they say, falling in love. And I experienced that. Yeah, nice. That's nice. And the rest is history? Or? Yeah, we went to Argentina <laughs> together uh, like a year and a half after we got married. We got married at this church. Do you speak Spanish? Bastante. I, I, I don't speak Spanish, so, Spanish, so you have to Mas tell Mas menos. Okay. Well, I, I learned a lot of Spanish in Argentina. <laughs> Melody studied Spanish at CSU. She has a degree in Spanish and sociology. And she taught Spanish some in this yeah. school district. And she, she was my tutor. So we were there a year, so I was probably talking about like second grader, yeah. which is fine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the time we left. Yeah. So you want to tell us about the rest of your family? I am the fifth of six, seven children. Uh -huh. My my parents, my dad has been a farmer all his life. He started running the farm when he was 17. All of us worked on the farm in North Dakota. Yeah. Grain farmers. Um, so my parents, <laughs> they just kept having children. <laughs> Meat laborers. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, right. Right. That's the joke. You are you are creating your workforce. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the fifth son. Okay. And then after me was my only sister, and then I have a youngest brother. Okay. So there's seven of us. Everybody is alive um, of my you know yeah. my parents' 
on through the other generations. Wow, that's just, that's unusual, huh? These days. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And lots of you know, lots of people. Yeah. Because are they still in North Dakota? They're in Bismarck, North Dakota. Okay. And you have a daughter, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Jessica is 26. She's in the health and beauty industry. She is a stylist at Namaste in Old Town, right around the corner from here. And uh, I need a haircut. <laughs> so that's where you're going after you leave? No. no. <laughs> I don't like to make appointments. Oh. Which, that makes sense that I'm okay with appointments yeah. being made for me. Uh, so I just like, once in a while, I'll text her or call her and say, you got an opening today? Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, you know, as a pastor, I guess I would ask you, and especially kind of an eclectic um, group of people that gather here every week, do you, do you see, like, do certain concerns or something develop out of those? Or mm -hmm. Do you see a trend or anything? Yeah, I think, yeah, it depends on what congregation you're serving. Um, I think one of the roles of all Christians everywhere, so then by extension, a role of, of pastors is to pay attention for the blind spots mm -hmm. that we have corporately. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I don't... If you just think about, like, where is a church? Um, what is its, what are its, like, uh, cultural leanings? What are its ethnic, what's its ethnic constitution? Mm -hmm. How diverse is it or not diverse? What are their political leanings? We, we, we can't, I don't think we can say honestly that we don't have a feel for what the leanings of our congregation are, philosophically, politically, theologically. So I think, <laughs> depending on what you're talking about, I mean, Timberline has three, three congregations physically. We have Old Town, we have Timberline Road, and we have Windsor. And those are going to have different personalities and different blind spots right. and different strengths. Right. So it's like, pay attention to your strengths, uh, but, but uh, stay humble. I think the primary, I feel like it's a big part of the role is to pay attention to what is the prophetic word for this congregation at this time. In other words, what is the truth that we are getting numb to because we're in echo chambers. Mm. So. That's good. Yes. Rolla. <clears throat> well, I know that you have been um, learning about contemplative prayer. I have. How did you know that? Oh, that's right. I, told I you. want you to uh, um, explain what it is and just um, if you feel like sharing something with that, that'd be great. Well, there's probably no one uh, around here who knows more about contemplative prayer than me, so it's a good choice to ask. Just I, I'm totally kidding. Uh, it's a new practice for me. So, for all my life, the way that we prayed was we would pray using our minds. So we would think, what is it that uh, I'm worried about? What is it that my friends or I are going through? And then we pray. Putting into words. Intelligibly. Yeah. We say the words as if we're, we're leaving a message on the voicemail for God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then, in my tradition and in the Assemblies of God tradition, there's also praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. So praying in tongues like G20. is, is it, huh? Like two twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. So in the scriptures, it teaches uh, that when we don't know what to pray, the Spirit can pray through us. Utterances, mm -hmm. groanings, mm -hmm. and then there's also tongues, which, depending on. Uh, what what part of the Bible you're reading that could be tongue? I don't want to get too far into that, but you can. Anyway, it's not in your mind. It's as the Spirit moves through you and leads you. So you're not really thinking hard. So for me, I've dealt with uh, anxiety a lot all my life. Like I get 
I get fixated on things, and I can obsess on them, both for good or for mm -hmm. my own harm. Mm -hmm. And when I would, so Rala, then when I would go to pray, I would go with my mind to prayer. And my mind was my problem. Mm -hmm. And so prayer did not bring peace. And so what I learned about was in the contemplative Christian tradition, which reaches way back to the earliest centuries of Christianity, there was prayer which was silent prayer. And what I've learned about it, and I've only like, I've listened to some podcasts, I've read a book, and I've practiced. The practice is very simple. The practice is to sit for, an ex for a, a set period of time in silence, so let's just say 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. And what we are taught is that the purpose for this prayer is to consent to God's presence and God's work in your heart. Similar to how one would uh, consent to uh, an, an anesthesiologist when you're going to have a surgery at the hospital. It's like, when you wake up, or when, you, when you're when you done in that time of, of anesthetic, you wake up and there's been work done inside of you, and there's been healing, hopefully, done in you. Mm -hmm. And I like to think centering prayer that way. It's silent prayer. So you sit, you close your eyes, and then they say to choose a word, which is called a sacred word. And this is just not a word to... Um, meditate on, but it is a word that you use, they say, to return to God. Because remember, the only reason we are here is to consent to God's presence and God's action within. So the prayer, the word could be Jesus or peace or love. Receive. Huh? Receive. <laughs> it could be anything. It could be anything, but it's not a word for you to focus on and concentrate on. It can have meaning, but not... It's not to be given too much attention. The attention is on surrender. So then the, the key words in centering prayer are let go or surrender. So, every, so you sit there, you close your eyes.